In this problem, we are finding both the static friction and the kinetic friction between the desk and the floor. Static friction is the force of friction that needs to be overcome to start an object moving. If an object is at rest, like a box on a ramp, static friction is the force that is holding the box at rest. Kinetic friction, sometimes called sliding friction, is the force that is necessary to overcome to keep an object moving. Once you start pushing something, it is going to come to rest due to this kinetic friction. So to keep the object moving, you have to continually apply a force greater than that of kinetic friction. For this problem, we have to apply a 275 Newton force to start it moving. And since kinetic friction is generally smaller than static friction for a surface, we have to apply a force of 195 Newtons to keep the desk moving. In part A, we are looking at static friction, so our force applied is 275 Newtons. We will draw this force in the positive x direction. We also have to include the weight of our object in our free body diagram. The weight of the 35 kilogram box is 343 Newtons. The next force we include is the force of static friction. We draw this at the bottom of our box because friction occurs when two surfaces are in contact with one another. The final force in the drawing is the normal force, which reacts against the weight. To solve friction problems, we will usually need three formulas. We use our net force formulas in the x and y directions, as well as our friction formula. The absolute value of the force of static friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the absolute value of the normal force. The reason for the absolute value is that the coefficient of static friction, mu s, is a unitless, directionless force. It is a description of how rough or smooth the surface is. Our goal in this problem is to find mu s. Since our goal is to find the coefficient of static friction, we are going to have to isolate it in our friction equation. To find the value for it, we first have to find a value for the force of static friction and one for the normal force. First, we will find the force of static friction. To do this, we expand our net force in the x direction formula and put into it our variables. Fs is drawn to the left in our free body diagram. This indicates that it is a negative force, so we subtract it from our applied force. We know AX is zero because the system is at rest. Then we can plug in our values and to find the magnitude of FS. Next we will find the normal force. Our weight is negative so we subtract it from our normal force. We know the acceleration in the Y is zero because the system is not moving vertically. We input our values and find the magnitude of the normal force. Now we can take both the values we found and plug them in to solve for mu S. Finally we can find the coefficient of static friction and we have our final answer. In part B we want to find the coefficient of kinetic friction while the desk is moving at a constant velocity. Our force applied is 195 Newtons. Our weight hasn't changed so we have the same value as in part A. This time we have the force of kinetic friction so we draw it in our diagram and our final force is the normal force. We will use the same three equations to solve our problem although the friction equation has changed its subscripts to represent kinetic friction. Our goal is to find the coefficient of kinetic friction, so again, we need the force of friction and the normal force. We expand our net force in the x-direction equation to include our variables. The acceleration in the x-direction is zero because the desk is moving in a constant velocity. We input our values and find the magnitude of kinetic friction between the desk and the ground. Now we want to find the normal force. Again, the acceleration in the vertical direction is zero. We input our values and find the magnitude of the normal force. We can plug in our values found in our equations to solve for mu k and find our coefficient of kinetic friction. Notice how much smaller it is than the coefficient of static friction.